given that Gloria Macapagalaroyo is on her third term, she's not uh, yeah. running, we don't really know where she will be after 2019. What do you make of, of this draft and what does, it, what does it signal? Me, I consider it just one of those bills passed by the House. Yeah. I don't take it really seriously. Mm -hmm. So for some who even consider it a move by Gloria Macapagalaroyo, I say, I always tell people, nobody takes the Senate president seriously. Hmm. But he's at least the one who's been stopping some of these initiatives. I'm talking about Tito mm -hmm. Soto. Because he could have said, okay, that's the former president. She's, a po she's such a powerful person, but she's not. Hmm. We never saw Alvarez as powerful or Dograles. But since it was GMA, suddenly people always say there's a play somewhere. But I don't really see a play. Because I've seen third reading bills being passed and dying a natural death. And my cutoff is always the second week of December. Mm -hmm. It means nothing happens mm -hmm. after the so second week of December before an election year. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Throw so, it away. It's so like, rather than this draft charter being something ominous <laughs> and uh, really a, a power play, you're actually saying no, it's actually it's a piece grasping of paper. At, at the final straw? <laughs> no, it's a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Just like other third reading bills that I was passed know. in Committee of mm -hmm. Health, Committee on... Uh, public service, or so on. So there are hundreds of them. I thought but you were we... going to say, just like the draft charter. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The draft charter life. actually has not started even. Mm. That's my point. Yeah. Mm. The draft but charter, if it yes, was sir. endorsed after it was surrendered mm. by the CONCOM to the president, mm. if it was seen... Surrendered. Yes, but, but why would, or, or why would Congress <laughs> go as far as to pass it on third reading, well, can, uh, a, a draft constitution it's, that it's, is not going anywhere? It's the, there are so many tax laws that was passed. Well, why did they pass a draft charter uh, and submit it to the president? No, but the question is, who, uh, to whose favor is this no, being no, no, done? Because like, uh, other than GMA, and I then think, therefore, what's, uh, why gave her this favor? I, I think what's wrong with all of us is that when GMA became speaker, people thought she was powerful. Mm. Me, I saw it differently. When she became speaker, I saw two things. She was chosen because she was not a threat anymore. Okay. She's on her third term. Mm. So the alliance that, that, with Sarah Duterte doesn't... Uh, of course, Sarah Duterte is an original candidate. Okay. I mean, I, 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 Dean, Dean Mendoza, <laughs> so help that, us to... That's, that's a difference of my opinion. Okay, okay. Dean Mendoza, okay. para simple. Help us to close the book on this. Should, just, should we just move on from GMA yes. and consider her as inconsequential in 2019? Um, let me not touch that. I'm an economist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a skilled as Dean. Can I answer? Can I answer? Dean is the school of government. Ako for me, can I answer for Dean? She is. Okay. It's on their third term. Come on. Anybody was, how come when, when Speaker, uh, of course, Speaker Belmonte was not, but Nugrales, when he was on his third term, 2010, mm. nobody took him seriously anymore. What's the difference? Mm. Because it's GMA. But GMA was not helpful to the president when he became president. Mm. So, so she was a natural. No, she, she supported. No, she but supported no vote. She, when I say deliberate, President Duterte yeah. knows who really helped him and not. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing that she had a president. Uh, Gloria maybe as an ally, mm -hmm. but not in terms of will his government rise? Mm -hmm. if, because if that's true, can you imagine if he could have listened to Joey Salcedo more than, than his economic let, team? Let, let me note though that, um, I mean... From an uh, economist's perspective. Yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> having seen uh, the new House Speaker take over after the mid-year and convene the economic team to try and solve some of the noise mm -hmm. coming out of train, and sort of having a game plan and a communications sort of to, to basically get, get a handle on this. Uh, I do think that uh, the former president has many allies in cabinet. The former president mm -hmm. yeah. has many allies in the Supreme Court. Yeah. And the former president also has many allies in Congress. So there is something feeding this view that there is still, she's not a spent force. Uh, I, I will um, sort of agree with Dean though that it's really a, small, small window left, mm, yeah. right? Um, I will say this, the unfortunate casualty of that move, what you're asking, <coughs> to whose benefit does this go? The unfortunate casualty is the credibility of the federalism initiative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because everyone then saw what this is really going to be about, mm -hmm. which is a power grab by those people who are waiting in Congress yeah. Yeah. for the draft of good people like my friend here. <laughs> yeah. Once you offer them that draft and give them the control over yep. what is or isn't going to be in that draft, then everything just goes out the yes, window. Sir. Can sir, you let that me just proves maraming ally si former president. <laughs> no? Kahit kami ally, alam mo kung bakit? Because our draft became 
a perfect draft, no? When compared to the house. Dati, ang dahil huwag matikos doon sa draft namin.